Thank you so much for bringing us here, James. Uh, this is a beautiful place. It's um, unfortunately a bit too misty to see more to see, you know, look. But can you tell us more about this lake and its beautiful place here? So if you believe Irish legends, this lake was formed by a, a king, a giant king called Finn McCool, mm -hmm. who was angry with a Scottish king mm -hmm. and they were going to have a big fight. They started throwing things at each other across the Irish Sea mm -hmm. from Scotland to Ireland and he lifted a big lump of earth and threw it mm -hmm. at Scotland but he missed and it fell down in the middle of the Irish Sea and became the Isle of Man. I and see. Loch Ney has originated from that epic battle Fascinating. Of years ago. Fascinating. The real story is that it was formed 10,000 years ago after the last Ice Age, but it's a huge lake. Mm. Certainly by Irish or British standards, mm. this is um, bigger than any other lake in these islands. One of the biggest lakes in Northwest Europe. Mm. It's very shallow. It's only on average about eight meters deep, mm. but from top to bottom, you know, it stretches, you know, maybe 50 kilometers or so. Mm. And uh, you took us around, showed us a lot of industries based around this particular lake. Um, can you talk to us more about that and how it's impacting the ecology of the lake? So the extraction of uh, material from the bed of the lake has been going for 80, 90 years or so, mm. often with small boats and people with shovels. Mm. Um, now Is that for local consumption? For local North Ireland consumption, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, now it's it's a massive industry mm. and it's an industry that's getting bigger all the time mm. and there are about 15 20 or so ships which suction dredge with basically lift the bed of the lake out um, suck it into dredging ships bring it ashore and we saw some of those landing points just a few minutes ago and then they use the material use the raw material and say road building or perhaps export it for football pitches but increasingly there's an industry around using the sand to make concrete products and bricks and paving slabs and pipework and this material has been exported probably all over the world now. Mm, I see. Uh, do, do you know, does the community here know where, it's, where it goes, where the demand, most of the demand comes from? So to be honest there's been no sensible analysis of you know, how much is coming out? How much do we need as a society? Mm. Um, and, and where it's going? Um, because this activity is, is vast, but it's also unlawful. There are no valid consents. There's no valid environmental impact assessment, for example, for this extraction. There's no planning permission. This clearly requires um, a whole series of strategies and legal consents to be put in place. And because it's part of the black market effectively the twilight zone of of industrialized extractive industries here mm. clearly there isn't the transparency that we need um, every year for example the government is meant to carry out an annual minerals return from all these companies and plan strategically for this resource mm -hmm. what's happening at the minute is that this lock has been turned into a sort of wild west where we're People can just come along, extract it, pay the owner of the lock a royalty for every ton of sand, um, but there's no intelligent management of either the resource or how much do we need for future generations. Mm. What's very clear is that the extraction at the southern end of the lock and at the eastern end um, seems to have been exhausted over the last decade or two, mm -hmm. and now all the companies are concentrating and the last big banks of sand, which is in the northwest. The problem is that these areas are also very sensitive ecologically. For fish, we have a thriving community of local fishing cooperatives on Loch Ness. This site used to be the number one place for overwintering birds in the whole of these islands. Mm. The site, Loch Ness itself, is suffering from what we would describe as multiple organ failure if this was a human being, because the water quality is very poor. Sand dredging is only part of the component mixture of um, stresses on the log but it's it's a major impact we don't know how big the impact is but we know it's very serious I see um, and it seems to be this particular spot is very picturesque I see families here and you know um, and 
all these little flies. You would tell you tell us more about this. You were oh, uh, yeah. talking to us about it off camera, but it'd be nice to hear. Yeah, you. well, I love Loch Ness. You know, I've been coming here for years. You know, just it's a it's such a special place. It's it's almost undiscovered because no roads directly lead to it. In mm -hmm. a way, that's good. Um, it's huge by Irish standards. People can come here to fish. They can come here to look at birds and come here to. Um, teach your children how to swim on beaches like this or learn how to sail and to take canoes out and maybe camp on an island so there's lots of activities that this beautiful place can offer um, the flies are really special because Loch Ness has been twinned with a lake in Iceland called Lake Mivatn mm -hmm. this is my only word of Icelandic that I know Mivatn means fly mm -hmm. so th that's the lake of the fly, and local people call these flies Loch Ness flies. I think their proper name is called Coronamids, and in the, in the winter time they go down into the loch, they hatch out larvae, and these larvae are the building blocks really of the ecology of the loch, certainly for the birds, because the diving birds like Potchard and Tufted Duck and Golden Eye and Scop, these come here in thousands to feed on the larvae of these flies. So these flies aren't biting, so they're a wee bit annoying to look at maybe. And in the summertime, you can see clouds of them. Mm. In fact, I've seen, you know, plumes of flies near say a chimney and you think, God, oh, that chimney's on fire. You know, <laughs> there's just so many of them. Mm. So they're a really distinctive, unique feature of, of this very special place. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful place, so serene and calm. Um, so you're doing an event tomorrow and can you talk to us more about that? Uh, it, uh, it's, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, and we're so glad that you're coming as well. Um, because I think, you know, your presence is really important because what we're trying to do is look at some of the issues. You know, how we're treating this place, Loch Ness, which should be one of our most special sacred sites in mm -hmm. Ireland. And, and also how we're treating other places internationally. And there's a common theme, I suppose, which is how we manage our resources, you know, sustainably for the long term and for for children who are not yet born, you know, and, and how we're um, extracting at such an accelerated rate mm. in the last, certainly here in the last couple of decades. So we want to share our stories, you know, and you're a chief storyteller. I really <laughs> love that job description. <laughs> Wish I had it. Like <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, we want to talk to storytellers elsewhere mm. because one thing we do realize is that the government isn't on our side here. You know, we're, we're brought up to believe, you know, that we have systems of laws and protective measures. This is Ramsar side, a wetland of international importance, a European special protection area, and the clues in the name, it's special. Mm. It's meant to be protected. It's an area of special scientific and it's got everything. But it doesn't mean a thing mm. when companies can come in and just take out whatever they want, whenever they want. Mm. So we want to share the stories of what's happening in Northern Ireland. Loch Ness is just one example, unfortunately, of of many illegal extractive um, operations that are taking place there. And link those with what's happening in in other places. And, and I think together as you know, campaigners or just as human beings or storytellers, we mm. can we can start saying, you know, you know, of course we need material, you know, we need to take things from the earth, but we need to be more respectful about how much, um, because clearly these systems across the globe and locally are at breaking point now. Mm. So this is the generation, our generation, to try and make a difference. Yes, absolutely. There's there's hope though, and that's that's the most important thing that we need to communicate to people out there that we can really make a difference. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think I think the hope comes from not expecting other people to do things. Mm. The hope comes from what we'll see tomorrow and over the next few days. Mm. Hundreds, thousands of people are wakening up now not to expect other people to do things, to protect beautiful places, but to take responsibility ourselves. Mm. Because when the systems that are meant to be put in place aren't working the hope is not to give up the hope is saying well we'll do it ourselves we'll become the environmental protection agency if the so-called agencies um, aren't doing their job mm. so i was i get very concerned and very upset about the destruction of 
this beautiful place you know I'm also aware that um, we are not alone and increasingly across this tiny part of the world and this part of Ireland mm. we have so many friends and so many people beginning um, to declare their intention that we need to manage our resources in a much more um, careful and respectful way. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much. It's, it's wonderful thank and you. thank you for bringing us to this place. Um, thanks Can again. I ask you a question? Certainly. <coughs> Why do you do what you do? <laughs> because I don't think I would be at peace if I didn't. It's, um, it's, it's something I've always uh, felt called to do, but for a very long time I didn't. Um, and I felt something was missing in life. And it's important to share these stories and to um, share care and concern. We have one earth, one place, we've got to take care of it. So that's what I feel compelled to share. Thank you.